In this part of the cookbook, I want to use a function that I often use to determine what pool number the last object has in a certain object pool. So let's say that I want to auto-generate a few macros using a plugin. In that case, I don't really care what macro number they have. All I want to do is to create them and then to, for example, add them to layout view. Or in a perhaps more common scenario, let's say that you want to auto-create auto a sequence that contains all of your color presets for a certain group. We saw that in an example earlier, by the way. In that case, perhaps you want to add a few hues to the end of that sequence because maybe you have a long sequence with a bunch of different settings for that groups. And yes, if you add cues to an executor, they are always added to the end of the sequence. But then you don't know the queue number. And as we saw in the presets to sequence plugin, uh, that can actually be really important if you want to assign the labels in a way that your sequences tell you exactly what presets you use in every queue. So with this trick, you can actually find out what the last pool number is for macros, cues, effects, anything really, and then start a loop that always knows which items or which item it's currently writing to. Let's take a look at the code. So let's first check out what this plugin actually produces in terms of results. So I'm going to go enter object type. As I mentioned a few times before, you never want people to have to type in something in your plugins if you can avoid it, because that always means on the big consoles that they actually have to slide out the keyboard tray, which in the long run, if they have to do that often, just costs a lot of time. Object type in this case is effect. And I want to enter a range start. I want to start looking for the first at the first object and then depending on how far down the list or how far down the pool you still have objects stored uh, you need to enter a different value here uh, in this case i'm just going to go with 1000 because in this case i know that i don't store anything beyond the effect slot 1000 and now when i press enter it actually returns that the last effect object in the pool has the number eight and now if we want to write code that starts adding effects after that, we could use that to go, all right, then start with nine. Now let's see a few more examples. I am going to go with plugins. Let's see what that says right here. Object type plugins one and then 1000 as an upper bound. And we can see here 26, that's correct. And then let's try and see if we can also do the same for cues because that's something that I always found really useful. So for example, in this case, remember how we created this in the presets to sequence uh, plugin chapter. This is essentially a sequence that was auto-generated from a group and a range of presets. And what this does is for the group odd, it actually sets these different presets if I go through them. So let's say that I want to add a few more looks with another plugin to this sequence that allows me to set different looks for the group odd. And in that case, I want to find out what is the last Q number so that I can actually start adding cues below that. And again, if we just go store programmer values in that executor, that's going to automatically happen. But like that, we don't know what Q number that is. And so it's really helpful to know exactly what cues we're writing to. So let's see if we can find that out. In this case, it's executor hmm, 201, 1.201 Q, right? Because now it takes this string and attaches all of the numbers in this range to find out whether or not that object exists. And this will make sense in a second once we take a look at the code. I don't know, my queues are never running beyond 500 queues. And now we can see that the last element in there has the index three, in this case, the queue number three. Perfect. Now let's take a look at the code. It's actually not that complicated and kind of goes back to the video, how do you find out whether or not a queue exists? And this just kind of takes it into a more general purpose direction. So first of all, we have a bunch of different um, questions that we ask the user here. Again, this could be summarized into one function, but for the simple example, I didn't bother. And then get last object, takes the object type, range start, range end. Good enough. 
Now what happens is that we have this for loop and you can see obviously it goes through this whole range, right? So i is in the beginning the range start value, in this case number one is what we often specified here and then range end was the upper end. So most of the time we entered a 1000 for that. And now it's running this code and all it does here is essentially create this object name. By the way, I could have just defined both of these variables in here. So there's no need for me to actually define them up front. This is, I don't know, was probably quirky um, decision of me at that moment. Feel free to change that around and improve it. So I'm assembling this object type and I'm attaching this number to it, the number that we're going through with this loop. And then all we do, and again, this is something that is even existing in, or this even, this is something, and again, this is something that you find even in the official example plugin. But all we do here is sort of create this handle or get this handle and then check if the handle exists. And if it does exist, then that's our new last index right here. And then finally, we just return that last index and that's essentially it. Now let's be clear on something here. This solution is not very pretty because this code in and of itself is not very performant, right? You will never notice any big performance impacts from this, I don't think. But just think about it, what it does here. If we enter a 100,000 as the upper bound, it does this loop execution 100,000 times. No matter if we have 10 objects in that pool or 100. So clearly this is not a very efficient way. But to tell you the truth, I never found a better way because the whole API around reading out objects from the show file I just couldn't get it to work in a way that it would tell me or let me know how many pool objects were in each given pool. So I actually resorted to this method and I know this is not very pretty, but it does work. And so that's why I wanted to share this trick with you because this doesn't look like a good solution, but it did serve me very well. So go ahead and use it, go ahead and improve it. I mentioned a few things here that weren't quite as great for example this part right here and then also i kind of have these variables outside of the loop where there's really no reason for it so all in all take this example use it for your own plugins and always feel free to improve it but this is how you can get the number of the last object in a range in ma2